Hi, my name is Oliver Van Uckelen. Uh, I'm a physician in training at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York, currently working in the lab of Samir Parekh. Uh, and today I'm talking about the suboptimal immune response to SARS-CoV-2 mRNA vaccination in myeloma patients and its association with anti-CD38 and BCMA targeted treatment. I want to talk about the MARS study or myeloma antibody response study, which is a study that opened early in 2021 after the vaccine got emergency use approval with a goal to characterize both the humoral or antibody response and cellular immune response to SARS-CoV-2 vaccination in myeloma patients. Because we know that myeloma patients and patients with plasma cell dyscrasias in general um, suffer from immune compromisation due to either the disease itself or the therapy that they're receiving. The cohort that I'll talk about today consists of more than 400 myeloma patients, including 34 smoldering myeloma patients. Um, as you can see on this slide, almost all of the patients had two doses of an mRNA vaccine recorded in their health, electronic health record. And um, virtually all the patients, or 93%, had an available anti-spike IgG measure, measured more than 10 days after the second dose of mRNA vaccine. We started um, giving third doses to most of our patients. And you can see that about half of the patients had the third dose of vaccine recorded in the health record. And about 30% of patients had an available anti-spike IgG more than a week after their third dose. And in a smaller subset of patients, about 10% of the whole cohort, we were able to study T cell data um, to know more about the cellular immune response. This data was published earlier this year. And on the left, what is shown is that after two doses of mRNA vaccination, the myeloma patients that are shown in red have a very variable and suboptimal IgG response compared to healthy controls shown in gray with a similar age as our myeloma patients. Importantly, on the bottom, you can see that there's 41 patients in this cohort of, or about 16% who actually didn't have any detectable anti-spike IgG. And this to us suggests that they might not be protected uh, after receiving vaccination. Interestingly, on the right, we show that myeloma patients who actually had a COVID-19 infection shown in pink here as the second column had much higher antibody levels that are comparable to healthy controls after COVID-19 infection shown all the way to the right. When we split the patients by the therapy that they were receiving at the time of vaccination, as shown on the left here, you can appreciate that the patients that were receiving anti-CD38 containing therapies with either daratumumab or isatuximab, and patients that were on a BCMA targeted treatment by specifics or CAR T cell therapy had much lower uh, response and at a higher risk of not developing any antibodies shown here on the bottom. We also run a statistical model to look at factors that are associated with either the disease or the treatment. And we saw that response status at the time of the first vaccination was protective if the patient had a complete remission or stringent complete remission and that other factors such as grade three lymphopenia and the treatment factors that I mentioned previously were associated with a high risk of not developing um, antibodies after two vaccine doses. Because the vaccines have I mean, we started giving the vaccines early in 2021 now we have data up to 10 months after the two doses. And the figure here shows two important things. On top, you see myeloma patients who previously developed COVID-19 infection. And I hope you can appreciate that they um, have high antibody levels or antibody titers and that they remain very high even up to nine or 10 months after um, vaccination. And if you compare this to myeloma patients who didn't have uh, prior COVID-19 infection shown in dark red on the bottom, the vaccine response is much more transient and we see the levels of antibody decline over time to very low levels um, six months or more after the two doses. All the way on the right, you can see uh, the patients that had received the third dose of the vaccine and it was very reassuring and very important to note that most patients um, that didn't have prior COVID-19 uh, really had much higher levels of antibodies after the third shot. We also wanted to look at cellular immunity because patients are not only protected by antibodies, but obviously also uh, can benefit from T cell immunity, um, fighting cells that are virally infected. But what is shown here in this figure is that if you compare healthy controls in blue, myeloma patients with detectable antibodies in green and myeloma patients without detectable antibodies after vaccination in red, you can see that when we look at CD4 T cell immunity, 
that the levels of um, CD4 T cells producing inflammatory or activating cytokines is significantly lower in the myeloma patients without detectable antibodies. And we found a, cl a clear correlation between the antibody level and the cytokine production in CD4 T cells. What this figure illustrates is that the patients in orange here um, didn't have any detectable T cell response to uh, coronavirus peptides. And again, although the numbers are lower, you can appreciate that the risk appears to be much higher or the highest in patients on anti-CD38 therapy or patients on an anti-BCMA bispecific, more so than patients on other uh, treatments or patients after anti-BCMA CAR-T, and especially in the healthy controls where we didn't observe any patient that had no detectable T-cell response after vaccination. The third dose of mRNA vaccine, as I mentioned previously, seems to be effective in most of the myeloma patients. Here I show data for 43 individuals that, did, that had no detectable anti-spike IgG after two doses, and for which we had data more than one week after dose three available. As you can see in the figure on the right, 35 out of 43, or 81% of these non-responders developed detectable IgG levels, a phenomenon that we call zero conversion. And the median level increased from zero to 58 um, units per uh, milliliter. More than 40 is considered strong positive in the assay that we use at Mount Sinai, and we have found that more than 50 units per ml correlates very strongly with a high neutralizing capacity against the viral variants that we've uh, studied so far. On the next figure, I showed the data for the 79 individuals with myeloma who had detectable empty spike IgG after two doses uh, to highlight the effect of a third dose on patients with detectable antibodies. And as you can see, virtually all the patients uh, 78 out of 79 or 99 percent uh, clearly increased their IgG levels, a phenomenon called zero elevation, and the median increase was from 34 to 382 units per milliliter, so a more than tenfold increase. In summary, we have demonstrated that the SARS-CoV-2 antispike IgG response is suboptimal and highly variable in myeloma patients after two doses of vaccination that prior COVID-19 infection is associated with a higher and more durable antibody response. There's a significant fraction, about 15% of myeloma patients that does not develop any detectable anti-spike IgG, so-called non-responders, after two doses, a phenomenon that we found to be associated with treatment with anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies and BCMA-targeted therapy, response status, as well as lymphopenia. And the lack of IgG response is clearly associated with a weaker SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell response, suggesting that patients might be at high risk for clinical infection. The, now that we have some data on the third dose, we've seen that the third dose administration leads to zero conversion in the large majority of non-responders, about 81%. Um, but that also means that about 19 or 20% is persistently negative. We're currently collecting more data to study whether we can identify factors associated with non-response to the booster. And in virtually all responders, the third dose was associated with a higher titer after administration. There's important work ongoing to study the mechanisms of non-response and the efficacy versus variants, especially now that we have uh, a new variant of concern uh, spreading throughout the US. We also have ongoing studies to determine clinical infection risk and alternative protection, protection strategies, rather, including prophylactic uh, administration of monoclonal antibodies. And with that, I'd like to acknowledge the people that have collaborated on this project, including the people in the Parrick Lab, Personalized Virology Initiative at Mount Sinai, the Cyronet Study Group, the Human Immune Monitoring Center at Mount Sinai, the International Myeloma Society, and the Myeloma Center of Excellence.